you are watching an Al Bear review. Cue the music. <laughs> <laughs> Some people on this planet Earth, they just different, man. Some people just really, really want uh, respect uh, shown to them from people who, you know, they are involved with or whatever the case is. And, and, and you know, April and Fizz, they done announced to the world that, you know, they got a relationship or whatever the case is. And basically, from what I can understand, Moni's problem with their whole situation is she kind of summed it up because, you know, uh, she asked... And, and, you know, I don't think it's out, uh, out of bounds of asking your child, you know, where does your mama or your daddy live at? Especially if you're going over they, you know, to the, the child going over to their house. I don't feel like that's out of bounds. You know, I feel like that healthy communication like let's be serious why shouldn't your baby mom or your baby father know where you live at i mean i just feel like that's sneaky that's some sneaky stuff so anyway she was like she asked her son cameron you know which street or, or where does they live and he his response i don't know i don't know they ain't in my business you gotta ask them and we haven't seen uh, Fizzley and Monique's son, Cameron, in a while, but bottom line is he's a damn child. And for a child to give a response like that to his mom just lets me know that that's what he's being told to do. And because he, I guess, lived with his father, he probably have more influence on him than Al and Monique's album have on the child. So that was an issue for me. You know what I mean? I could only imagine... Uh, Telling my mama, I don't know, that ain't my business as a child. First of all, we, she know it ain't your damn business. Like, let's just go ahead and get on the table. She knows it's not your business, but she asking you. You understand what I'm saying? So, but like I said, he he brainwashed by his daddy. And I think Monique's issue is that she's just, uh, 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 to have a healthy co-parenting relationship, it needs to be a level of respect, a level of communication between those two. So anyways, um, April and Monique step outside to have a conversation. And the conversation really, first of all, April didn't want to have the conversation. She was very uncomfortable. Her, it is something about light-skinned people when they grown. They just be so uncomfortable. Her and Fizz, it was just so uncomfortable at the whole skating ring. But anywho, she stepped outside having a conversation with Momo and Monique was just like, my issue, my problems is not with you. It's with, you know, my son's father. It has nothing to do with, you know, what you two have going on. Or not necessarily what you two have going on, but with you. And so the energy that, look, man, April just, it felt like April was trying to just, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, just, just shit on Monique as if. It was necessary. Then Fizzle, he come up and he talk about if we not having a conversation about our son Cameron, there's nothing for us to talk about. He's very, I can see why she have uh, uh, mental issues when it come to him. He uses their son as a pawn to have conversations he wants as well as to get out of conversations that he does not want to actually have with her. Um, if you don't believe as a parent that you and your child's other parent should have a conversation or is entitled to have a conversation about uh, what it is that you have going on with your life, what new person is in your life, and how it's affecting uh, the child, then you are absolutely wrong. Now, Fizz did go as far as to say he don't know why Monique's tripping because, you know, she was in a whole a lesbian relationship and he was cool with it. But see, I think that's the whole situation. That's what she's saying. So when she dated somebody, 
Don't just act like when Monique started dating this girl, all of a sudden she was around the child. I don't know that, but I don't believe it. Um, and I guess that's what, and, and, and I, I know that's what Monique's saying, but what Monique's saying goes deeper than that. The fact that your son is coming back to her telling her lies, like it ain't none of her business, his business, well, his daddy and his girlfriend live at, that's a problem. And the fact that you don't even want to, uh, I guess, let her know what it is that you have going on in your personal and your relationship life is a little sketchy. But like I say, man, Fizz is one of those guys who he uses their child as a pawn to actually talk about the things that he want to talk about and get out of talking about the things that he doesn't. And which it just leads Monique to go crazy, man. It really does. So everybody's pretty much team Monique. Monique is basically, I saw this episode, she having a, a breakdown with, with Tierra Marie. I don't know how you allow yourself to break down a lot and let Tierra Marie be the one to calm. Tierra would tell her credit. She was doing all she could to, to calm Monique down and bring her back because Monique was just talking about this type of depression that she's going through. She having a bloody stool. I just, it, it, it's different type of people that, that that lives in the world, man. You can't just say people acting a certain way because they're not over you. you I, I I truly believe she is far past fears. I truly believe that. Um, because nothing she does is shows me as a man. And, and, and like I said, that's just typical saying box. Oh, she's still talking about you. She still wants you. Nah, that nah. It's bigger than that, man. We talking about something bigger. And so that you know, Monique goes on Jason Lee's radio show. He apologized to her about the sex tape, which I mean, she felt like it was sincere, but I just feel like it was a piece of crap. He only apologized the way he did because this whole April and Fizzly, the fact that April and Fizzly is a whole storyline and got the streets of Hollywood talking is just lets me know that celebrities really don't live in Hollywood. Because if you gonna talk about April Jones, which her fame is being Omarion's baby mom, now all of a sudden being Fizzlet's new woman, it's it, you know it, it's I, I, I don't nobody live in no damn Hollywood. It just go there for different events and stuff. So you know nothing really came out of that. I thought April was pregnant too from the picture, but apparently she's not. But that's none of my business or my concern. So whatever. So anyway, this episode A one and lyrical. They trying to make steps in the right direction. I still can't deal with this boy having his fingernails painted. I'm sorry. I, I can't. I can't. And I know we're in a, a different world where you're able to express yourself however. And that's perfectly fine. But I was. I, I came around and he painted his fingernails all black. Or, you know, whatever. But one was blue. One was red. One was yellow. One was green. It was just a bit much for me. But that ain't none of my business. I ain't, I ain't know that. But anyways... Basically, him and Lyrical, they having a play date with their son. He have a whole violinist or whatever you call him set up to play music. It was just a bit, but that, that, the violinist just aggravated me. I don't, like that type of, I don't like that kind of music. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and you know, I know he's trying to be, get his romantic on, but he, he, he couldn't let that damn violinist at the damn house, man. I, you know, so they let picnic and all that good stuff and Basically, he playing with this, you know, with, you know, with their son, and he basically saying he want to do whatever he can to get the marriage back going in the right direction, and um, you know, he wants to her to move back in. And she just like, I don't know if I'm trying to do that, dog. Like, you ain't really, you know, showing me what I need you to show me. Um, so he was just like, okay, cool. Leave your belongings and storage, and just come back to the house, and we can, you know, go on a trial basis and see how it goes. And she asked him to open up his phones, and he did. And she go through his DMs, and of course, he's saying it's some girls in there twerking. And he's saying he he trying to set up a whole music video shoot, and she basically said, "I don't trust you like no money to get you on the system," which I'm perfectly fine with. I feel like, given the circumstances of the relationship, they both probably need assistance to, you know, handle situations like that. But let's talk about the whole trial basis now. It, you know. It's weird. I feel like I'm, a, you know, I'm, a, I'm gonna throw my girlfriend out here with this one. She always, you know, she got this whole theory or this whole fascination with that's the wrong word, right? So maybe him saying trial basis is the wrong word because 
if I'm going off what Lyrical saying, Lyrical has kind of got one foot in, one foot out. She want to come back home, but then again, she don't want to come back home because she feel like it's going to lead to the same thing happening over again. So the solution is let's just, you know, let's try. Let's, let, let's make steps in the right direction and say that we both trying to mend these fences. And so Lyrical got a whole show. A1 is going to help her with the show. And Lyrical Mama shows up. And A1 going off on the sound cool because Lyrical sound is not sounding right or whatever the case is. And of course, Lyrical Mom, she's not happy with A1 being there. She's not happy with how he's talking to the uh, sound check, you know, people or whatever the case is. <laughs> Rewind. Lyrical her Mama go on a, a, a shopping date for this whole performance and basically Lyrica tell her mom that A1 wanna do a whole trial basis. Now look, of course Lyrica mom was like, man, y'all married, man. What the hell is a trial basis? Y'all married. Either y'all gonna do it or you not. Uh but she was just like, you know, she want people to know that she's having no influence on Lyrica. Whatever her decision is, is her decision. And she know A1 a dog, he done cheated, etc, etc. But Pam wasn't feeling the whole trial basis thing. And I really don't really I mean, I don't know. I understand why she don't feel it. I, I, I truly do. Like, y'all supposed to be married. Either y'all gonna work it out. But that, you know, that solution sounds simple. Either you're gonna move in or you're not. That that sounds like simple, but that, that's really not what it is. Lyrical is basically saying she wants to, she loves him, she knows that he loves her. But just because you love somebody, I don't mean you're gonna do them right. You know what I'm saying? So, Lyr I, so I, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know. I let my girlfriend come up with a better way to describe it. Even though. I don't think she's gonna be able to. I'm, I'm, I'm putting her on the spot. So, you know, we'll see what she say down in the comment section. But anyway, at lyrical performance, Pam, or oh, not Pam, that's A1 mom. Uh, lyrical G, she comes in and A1 tries to greet her. She ain't having none of that. And he like, there you go. Bringing that energy up in here that's not needed. And it just turns into a whole sideways situation. Lyrical mom start calling A1 out, talk about, you know, how he cheated and all of this is his fault and yada 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 and then A1 just he lost me man he was like why are you acting like I'm the only bad person I'm you acting like I'm the only guilty one and it, it, it's just like bruh bruh the difference between your guilty and her guilty is you begging she's not she and, and, and it's he lost me with that one, bro. I'm just like, bro, why in the world would you go there? So Lyrica ended up getting mad. Lyrical mom ended up getting mad. And he just looking like, what is the truth? And then he has to go to apologize to the sound crew. Or they wasn't going to do it. A1 just kind of had me just scratching my head. I'm just like, dog, why would you say that? Like, <laughs> What's your motive for actually saying that, bro? So, I don't know what A1 was thinking. Um, it really ain't none of my business. Uh, like Cameron told Moniz, it really ain't none of my business, but, bro, you begging for your wife to move back in. Sometimes you got to take the punches to, to win the window, to win the fight, bro. It's like, you just, you just can't knock them out, bro. You just can't, but, I mean, we, I don't know how many more episodes we got to go. I'm, I'm you know, I, you know, look, I like the show because it gives me something to watch on Mondays, okay? Until it's and you know, especially with, 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 you know, come on little folk football. So, it is what it is. I ain't in love with it. But, um, hopefully next week episode will be a tad bit more entertaining and less about the whole Fizzler and, 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 and uh, April Jones situation. It's just like April, I mean, Moni said, like, the same thing that you're on social media crying about with your baby father about communication, you just wish he'll talk to you. It's the same thing I'm asking baby daddy for the fact that you can't even empathize with that man just just it's just crazy so i don't really know what to make a whole dog on april but i mean hey you know what i'm saying the light skins look good together that's all i can really say man i'm out of here man happy tuesday you know the vibes i'll holler at y'all good folks later man peace